So good afternoon. My name is Karen Corman, and I have the privilege of being the executive director of the UIC Alumni Association. Thank you so much for joining us for this virtual Golden Graduate Celebration. And of course, this is really not how we wanted to celebrate uh, your anniversary since 50 years since graduation. But our sincere hope is that you do come and join us back on campus when it's safe for us to do so in the future. Uh, additionally, we hope that you received a special treat in the mail, and if not, there's one on the way, uh, just to have a little treat during this meal, a, a little meal, I suppose, uh, as we are celebrating today. We have a really fun uh, program planned for you for the next two hours, uh, but since we are on Zoom, we have a couple of housekeeping items uh, before we get started. So you might have noticed that all of your microphones are muted. We certainly encourage you to, see, to keep those cameras on, which I can see that some of you are doing, so thank you so much for that. We love seeing your faces. It makes it feel like we're actually a little bit together. Um, if you have questions throughout, please go ahead and put them in the chat and we will make sure that we, we engage with your questions and respond to your questions. Uh, but please go ahead and use that chat feature at any point that you want uh, and chat questions. We have a few more people coming in from the waiting room, which is great. Uh, and you probably heard this when you came in, but please do be aware that this program is being recorded. So thank you for allowing us to record it. So tomorrow we will be celebrating our winter commencement at UIC. And as part of that program, we have created a short video to share with the class of, of 2020 about the Golden Graduates program. So to kick off our program today, we thought we would show you that short video that all of our graduating students will see tomorrow. Uh, also on your computers, if you don't have volume or if you have any technical issues, please go ahead and chat those and we'll try and address them as best as possible. In I'm going to pause because I just I see a few people saying that there's no audio. Uh, so give me just one moment, please. I'm gonna stop share and try that one again. And of course we have to have some technical difficulties to kick this off because that's how this works on Zoom. In 1965, the first class of undergraduate students from the University of Illinois at Chicago, or as it was called at the time, the Circle Campus, graduated. In 2016, we started a new tradition to honor our alumni celebrating their 50th anniversary since their graduation. UAC enhanced our winter commencement ceremonies by incorporating a special ceremony called Golden Graduates. Typically in December, our Golden Graduates are invited back to campus to participate in activities throughout the day, culminating with a special procession into the arena to join our newest class of alumni for their graduation ceremony. To symbolize 50 years since their graduation, the Golden Grads are given golden caps and gowns to wear at the ceremony. There are so many aspects that make the Golden Graduates Day and ceremony special. For many of our graduates that weren't able to make their graduation, Maybe they were working, or off fighting a war, or simply unable to get to the Chicago Stadium. For those graduates, it's a chance to acknowledge their accomplishments so many years ago. And if they were able to attend, this special ceremony often brings back fond memories and friendships of their time in the peer room or throughout campus. The Golden Grad Ceremony also provides an opportunity for alumni to see what UIC is today, how we have grown, changed and developed, but have always kept faithful to our mission of providing an excellent and oftentimes life-changing education in the heart of Chicago. Hearing their stories about their time on campus and seeing their reaction and pride in UIC today is always a highlight of our year. Additionally, for our 2020 graduating students, the Golden Graduate Ceremony symbolizes the lifelong connection to UIC. 
Although none of us are able to celebrate in person this year, we will continue this tradition by hosting a virtual Golden Graduate Celebration. We want to honor this milestone for our class of 1970 with the extreme hope that we will be able to welcome them back for an on-campus celebration in the future. Congratulations to the class of 2020 and to the class of 1970 on this milestone. We are so proud of all of you. Okay, well, hopefully you were able to hear the video the second time around. Apologies for the, the audio issue at the beginning. Uh, so we want to just walk you through a little bit of the agenda that we have planned for you today. And as you did hear in the video, one of our favorite parts is really hearing about your experience and your time um, at Circle. So we will have towards the end of our program uh, a part where we do breakout rooms so we can have you interact with each other and with us and, and hear those stories. Uh, going to start out though with a then and now presentation, which I like to say is uh, we're, we're testing to see how much you remember and if we got things right. So, uh, so Wendy will take us through the then and now in just a little bit. We then are going to take you on a virtual campus tour so you can see what UAC looks like today. We then have a special performance from our student acapella group. They put together a song for you. And then we will be joined by two of our current students that are part of the University Ambassador Program and they'll talk about what it's like um, at UIC today. And then again, we will break you out into those breakout rooms. As we started to think about the program, it seemed like there was a lot going on when you graduated from the Circle campus, from the Vietnam War, to we know some of you perhaps even on this, this call uh, protested and walked out of, of graduation. We heard many stories about the blizzard of 68. Uh, and also, we also know many of you met your spouses at UIC during that time. So we're excited to hear about those stories. Uh, what hasn't changed though is that still about 38% of our student body is um, their first generation college students and many many of our students still work full or part-time jobs and many of them also still commute to campus. So again just to take you down that path of the then and now we thought we'd share with you a little bit more about what UIC is like today and compare it to 1970. We want to thank the University Archivist for all of their help in pulling together the data and the photos uh, and hopefully this will bring up some fond memories for all of you. I'm pleased to turn the program over and to introduce Wendy Kruper, the Director of Alumni Engagement at the Alumni Association. Wendy has really planned this whole event and I'm very grateful for all of her hard work. Uh, and Wendy will now be taking over and presenting the then and now. So Wendy, I turn it over to you. Thanks, Karen. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Welcome. I'm really glad you were able to join us, even if it's virtually. Um, this is one of our most favorite days actually throughout the year normally is the golden grads presentation when we were able to have you all on campus. Um, so it was really important to us that we still try to find a way to honor and, and recognize this achievement. So for my portion of um, the presentation, uh, we like to take a look at uh, getting a sense of what things were like in 1970 when you graduated uh, versus what things are kind of like today. Um, both at UIC and sort of in um, the country at large. So we get started. So the year that you graduated or your final year at Circle, there were six colleges of study, uh, architecture and art, business, education, engineering, the graduate college and arts and sciences. And we also heard some stories from many of you about the registration process for classes and how there were very long lines um, and it would often take hours. And I wanna thank um, Fran Eichhorst because she sent uh, me a number of photos that she had grabbed from the university archives. Um, some prior time and due to the fact that we're all working remote we were very limited in the number of things we could get from the archives so this was one of the photos that, that she had sent to us and so I'm very grateful for that but of course students these days um, it's all online all of their registration for classes is online and actually for this year most of their classes are online as well so uh, so UIC in 2020 looks very different. Um, we actually have 16 uh, schools and colleges. Uh, in 1982, the Medical Center campus uh, consolidated with Circle Campus to give us all the health sciences colleges. And most recently, the John Marshall Law School joined UIC officially last fall. So we have 16 uh, colleges and schools of study right now. Enrollment. Your final year at Circle had roughly a little over 19,000 total students. 
um, when campus, when Circle Campus was initially sort of conceived by then Mayor Daly, uh, he really envisioned it as being a campus for roughly 30 to 32,000 students. So today, our enrollment sits at. Oh, um, actually, at 33,000. Ah, <laughs> more technical difficulties. That's all right. Um, so. Are we going to run that again? Okay, so we'll go ahead and do this. 33,000 students uh, total um, at UIC today. Undergraduate tuition. Well, your final year at UIC or Circle at the time was roughly $350 per year. Students today pay just a little bit more. So they're looking at uh, around $1,500, $1,400. Um, dollars per year. Uh, obviously, um, it's about 5300 per semester and then with all of the additional fees and assessments. So it's a little bit more than it was <laughs> than when you were going to school. Activities Honor Society. So this is actually our oldest um, student organization on campus. If any of you are members of it, it'd be great if you could put that in the chat. Um, it is uh, still going strong at UIC, and it really um, honors students whose leadership in a number of student organizations has contributed to a better university community. And this year is the organization's 70th anniversary. Uh, if any of you were members of this, there are actually a number of plaques in Student Center East from each year that the organization has been in existence with all of the member names on them. You can see once we're allowed to venture back out into the world. Athletics. So the yearbook was, 1970 yearbook was very clear in the fact that um, many of the teams had new coaches and that <laughs> reflected a number of the records in the athletic teams. But the golf team, however, did go undefeated for the fourth year in a row. And in terms of women athletics, they had a variety of offerings, softball, swimming, bowling, fencing, badminton, and field. Homecoming 1969 was a two day affair that began on Friday night with a themed program titled Trash from the 30s. Uh, Saturday's activities began with an annual parade downtown followed by a football game at Soldier Field and then finally a dance on Saturday night. So we've got a few pictures there. And the next slide, we have a few more pictures from Homecoming as well. Uh, more in terms of campus events from the year, uh, obviously the Vietnam War sort of uh, dominated the landscape, uh, I think it, at Circle and in Chicago and nationally. Um, but importantly here at Circle, uh, there was a student strike in the forum in May 1970 in which uh, students graduate or the graduating students walked out of the ceremony, which we actually were also able to find a photo of in the archives, which is on the next slide. Yeah. Uh, more campus events. The governor came to speak at Circle in 1969. And then we also had um, a number of other speakers on campus, George Romney, Reverend Vivian, Alderman Leon Ray, I believe, and Chicago City Council member Julian Bond. So you had some, a lot of dignitaries that year. Uh, and lastly, and this was of particular interest to me, if anyone can shed some light on this, but the Rites of Spring was a week-long celebration on campus that included um, a number of activities, including goldfish eating. So if anybody would like to elaborate on that in the chat, we would all be extremely interested to hear a little bit more about that. Um, so please let us know. But that was, uh, it seemed like this was a very big, we have something similar these days called Student Involvement Fair, where a number of student organizations uh, host tables and activities for, for the student body, so. But they're not allowed to eat goldfish. <laughs> no, there's none of that is allowed. <laughs> okay, 1970 in review, so. We took a look at some of the basic cost of living items from 1970, just to kind of give us a sense of what, of how times have changed. Um, the most shocking one for me on here is the six pack of beer cost less than two dollars. I couldn't really couldn't believe that. Um, and then we've got a couple more 
on here that uh, I was also surprised to see the stamp only cost $6 and the house, the average cost of a house was $29,000. So kind of gives you a sense of um, what things were like 50 years ago. So. Um, okay, so we also pulled out a few key events of the year, month by month, um, a little bit of politics, a little bit of history, a little bit of pop culture. So in January, the very first episode of All My Children aired. Um, the Chicago Seven Defendants were found not guilty in February. The Beatles broke up in April. Also in April, the Apollo 13 spacecraft exploded. Uh, we had our very first Earth Day in April. Uh, the Kent State shootings took place in May. Uh, we got our first female generals in June. And then also in June, President Nixon signed the Voting Rights Act Amendment, um, lowering the voting age to 18. Um, in July, uh, the inaugural Top 40 broadcast with Casey Kasem. Uh, the EPA was created in July as well. Women Strike for Equality in August. And then in September and October, both Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, Joplin both died at the age of 27. Um, in October, PBS began operations as well. In November, um, Karen is particularly excited about this one because she loves musical theater. <laughs> Oklahoma made its network debut on CBS. And then in December, the North Tower of the World Trade Center was completed. So those are a few of the things that sort of highlights of the year. Okay, we have a quick Zoom poll for you. Um, if Jessica wants to bring that up, uh, which NFL team won the Super Bowl in 1970? Go ahead and make your selection. I don't know, I think there are a lot of Packer fans in this crowd, it seems like. <laughs> okay, it seems like the Packers at the pool. Wanna let us know? Kansas City Chiefs beat the Vikings 23 to 7. And I was interested to learn in this that the Vikings have still never won a Super Bowl to this day. Um, and then I think we've got one more quick uh, poll for you. Comic strip debuted in approximately two dozen newspapers in the United States. Which one do you think it was? There was a little clue there on the slide. All right, looks like Doonesbury won the poll and you are all correct. It was very debuted. Okay. So now we have a video to show you. Um, this is, a, it's relatively short and it really sort of demonstrates uh, the beginnings of UIC at Navy Pier and what it's grown into today. Um, so hopefully you'll enjoy it and Let's all cross our fingers that there's no technical difficulties in getting it to play. <laughs> UICU know today began as an extension of the University of Illinois on what is now one of Chicago's premier tourist destinations, Navy Pier. That was 1946. Following World War II, the University of Illinois sought to increase its presence in Chicago by creating a temporary two-year branch campus on Navy Pier. The Chicago Undergraduate Division, as it was known, was intended primarily to accommodate the influx of returning veterans eager to take advantage of the GI Bill. The lakeside location earned the Navy Pier campus the nickname Harvard on the Rocks. At that time, however, Navy Pier was not the bright,
attractive venue we know today as Chicago's leading tourist attraction. The 3,000-foot pier was a dreary, functioning port facility, which the university shared with other tenants, including the Chicago Police Department Traffic Division and several military detachments. After the war, and after the initial wave of returning veterans had passed through, demand for a public university in Chicago remained high. The university made plans to create a permanent degree-granting campus in the Chicago area. The site was a 100-acre parcel at the junction of Greektown and Little Italy to accommodate a planned student body of 32,000 in such a small area. Famed Chicago architect Walter Nesh arrayed the campus buildings in concentric rings like a droplet of water. The University of Illinois at Chicago Circle, named for the nearby ultra-modern freeway interchange, opened in February 1965. Our city would be sorely lacking if we did not provide the advantages of a great state university for all of the young people of our city and the nearby area. Circle, as it was commonly called, was a degree-granting institution with ambitions to become a great university. Within five years of the campus's opening, a period during which it was the fastest growing campus in the country, enrollment grew from 5,000 to 18,000, and almost every department began offering graduate degrees befitting the location of the campus at the crossroads of immigration. Many of Circle's students were first in their families to attend college, as are many of UIC's students today. UIC was born in 1982, when the Circle and Medical Center campuses were consolidated to form a comprehensive university with seven health science colleges, including one of the nation's largest college of medicine, as well as the College of Pharmacy, which is the oldest academic unit in the University of Illinois system. Dating back to 1859, Consolidation helped UIC reach elite Carnegie Research One status, and it remains the only public institution in Chicago to be awarded that designation. In 2007, James Stuckel Towers, a four-tower residential and dining facility, opened and was the capstone of UIC's South Campus development. The South Campus project brought student housing, retail stores, restaurants, and private residences to the historic Maxwell Street neighborhood. The influx of faculty and staff families and the expansion of student housing helped UIC change from a daytime commuter campus into a vibrant 24-hour academic community. In the summer of 2019, three major campus projects came to fruition, reflecting UIC's explosive growth in the College of Engineering the 57,500 square foot UIC Engineering and Innovation Building opened, housing chemical and civil and materials engineering students. The new building provides unique learning opportunities, attracts top academic talent, and will help spark innovation and growth in the industry. The unveiling of the 151,000 square foot academic and residential complex located on Harrison Street also occurred in 2019 the campus's first public-private partnership. The new living learning community provides residential accommodations for 550 students, a fitness center, social and study lounges, a Starbucks, as well as three large lecture halls, four classrooms, several study rooms, and a tutoring center. The university also acquired Chicago's first and only public law school, the UIC John Marshall Law School, after the approval of the Higher Learning Commission as UIC's 16th college. It will continue to operate at its downtown Loop location, expanding UIC's footprint in the city and provide current and prospective law students with more affordable education. Today, the University of Illinois at Chicago is an acclaimed research institution with 16 colleges and over 32,000 students, vital to the educational, technological, and cultural fabric of the region. UIC boasts a community of more than 265,000 alumni. Their hard work, leadership, 
discovery and service has a tremendous impact in and around Chicago, as well as across the globe. The UIC Alumni Association works diligently to keep them connected to UIC and each other. As the largest institution of higher education in the Chicago area, UIC is recognized as one of the most ethnically and culturally diverse universities in the country and is devoted to developing leaders that strive to serve others and make a difference locally and globally. This is UIC. So we thought we would give you an idea of um, what the campus will hopefully look like in the coming years. So as you can see in the upper right hand corner of the diagram, that is the circle interchange. And so all of the green and blue you see there is uh, basically the East Campus. Uh, the south part of campus is mostly athletics facilities. And then all of the other buildings sort of north of that are uh, residence halls and classrooms. And then to the left or to the west, which is basically about one mile away, because, well, we used to walk it pretty re regularly, but it's about a mile, um, is the west campus. And that is um, primarily the health sciences, colleges, and where uh, the hospital is. So we're going to be taking up um, a pretty big footprint. Um, in the coming years, and, and most of this is already actually there. They're just going to be doing some some improvements to some buildings. So, so this is the uh, Arc Building that we call it. it's the Academic and Residential Complex. It's the first, um, I believe, the first uh, residence hall that was uh, built on campus in many many years. Um, it's, it's, it's fantastic. We toured it last year. It opened last fall, I want to say, and it, it made me very jealous thinking back to my dorms <laughs> in college, um, mostly because of the free laundry and, and built-in pinball machines. But, um, it's very, it's very great. It's a very neat building. There's a Starbucks and there are student run Starbucks and state of the art classrooms. And so this opened last fall. The Engineering Innovation Center also opened last year, and this is a state-of-the-art building for our engineering students. Uh, there's a room in this building that has something like a 30-foot thick concrete floor so that they can do all kinds of um, experiments in there, um, but it's uh, one of the newer buildings on campus as well. This is the planned College of Business building, which will be located on Harrison Street. Um, so this is not up right now. It's gonna be very close to University Hall is the plan. And then this is a rendering of what will be the North Quad area in a new building, new building at the Stevenson Hall site. Um, if you've been to campus at all recently, you'll see that there's been a lot more green space added and they're, they're very much um, keeping that going with the new planned um, improvements. Um, this is my favorite uh, rendering to show people because I think it's, um, it just really shows sort of the adaptability of a lot of our space on campus. So this is the central quad, which is right outside of uh, what is Student Center East, which which I think was called Circle Circle Center back then. Um, and so this is just to the west of the building, and they want to use it to create it to be a multi-use space. So in the summer, it's obviously a lot of green space, but in the winter, uh, they can turn it into an ice rink. So I think that's really cool. And then this will be ideally what South Campus looks like. So down by Maxwell Street, but this is the corner of Halstead and, and Roosevelt Row. And so you can see there's a lot more um, UIC branding and just really making um, the area look like it belongs to 
to the university. And then this, just the last piece of history for you, because we are the Alumni Association. Uh, for many years, um, the only Alumni Association for UIC graduates was the University of Illinois Alumni Association, which was primarily uh, managed out of the Urbana campus with, with an office in Chicago. Um, but in 2017, along with our uh, capital campaign, we launched our first Alumni Association. And uh, we are here to serve only UIC alumni. So we are your Alumni Association. And um, we're about three years old. And this kind of programming, like Golden Grads, and you'll see later on a program called Alumni Exchange are kind of some of the things that, that we try to do for, for our alumni. Okay, so we're not actually gonna take a break right now. We are going to, um, we received this morning, uh, <laughs> very early this morning, a brand new video of a campus tour uh, that has been created. And we're going to show you that right now and then take a break. So Karen's gonna go ahead and cue that up. Um, and it is uh, literally fresh off of the video presses. Um, and it's it's really neat. So it'll give you a good sense of what um, what what UIC, particularly the East Campus, or when you were there, Circle Campus, really looks like right now today. So we'll get that going. And before we show you the video, we'd like to do another poll and see how many of you have been back to campus since you graduated. So, and we have no judgment in this. We're just more curious if you've seen. No. Oh. I should have asked you when, like which years you've been to campus, because if you, if you have not been to campus, the brutalism architecture is still there. <laughs> Got a few more votes coming in. Okay, well, it looks like the majority of you have. So um, again, as Wendy mentioned, this, this video is uh, fresh off the presses um, as UIC is adapting to the virtual environment. And so we are really watching it with you. Um, so give me one second, we'll share that screen. Hi, my name is Mummy Praise, and I'm going to take you on a virtual tour of the University of Illinois at Chicago, or as we like to call it, UIC. You'll find that we love acronyms here. I'm excited to show you one of the most diverse campuses in the country and Chicago's only public research university. Let's get started. The first stop is our campus union known as Student Center East, or SCE. Student Center East is one of the main activity hubs outside of classes. Here, you can grab a bite to eat at one of its many restaurants, meet up with friends and relax, and you can even head for a quick bowling game at the SCE Bowling Alley. It also houses the East Campus Dining Halls, the UIC Bookstore, and is the center for meetings and conferences and student organizations on campus, so you can always attend a talk or event here too. If we head east across Halsted Street, we'll see the Student Recreation Facility, or SRF which is one of the several places to work out on campus. By the way, you can always tell which way is east by looking for the Willis Tower. SRF is a three-story building, home to UIC's intramural and club sports teams like volleyball and boxing, and offers group fitness classes, instructional programs, and has an entire floor dedicated to cardio and weightlifting. There's a rock climbing wall, swimming pool, sauna, and a hot tub too. One of my personal favorites is the Tropical Smoothie Bar, so you can always enjoy a fresh fruit smoothie after a workout. If we head west out of Student Center East, we'll arrive at the Lecture Center Plaza, more commonly known as the Quad. The Quad is surrounded by some of UIC's biggest classroom buildings and is the heart of East Campus. Here, you'll find students relaxing, catching up on homework, skateboarding, chalk drawing, rallying, you name it. The Quad is also most active during the annual Student Involvement Fair, where over 200 of UIC student organizations gather to provide food and great music and free goodies in hopes of recruiting new members. Now let's take a quick look at some of our classrooms, labs, and studios. 
From big lecture centers to small discussion and seminar rooms, you'll find lots of different classroom types supporting many different Apologies for the uh, delay. I'm not quite sure why it's not playing. Give me just one moment, please. Well, this might be part one and part two of the video if it doesn't feel like loading. So I'm sorry about this. I'm not sure why it's not loading. ...on campus, so you can always attend a talk or event here too. If we head east across Halsted Street, we'll see the Student Recreation Facility, or SRF which is one of the several places to work out on campus. By the way, you can always tell which way is east by looking for the Willis Tower. SRF is a three-story building, home to UIC's intramural and club sports teams like volleyball and boxing, and offers group fitness classes, instructional programs, and has an entire floor dedicated to cardio and weightlifting. There's a rock climbing wall, swimming pool, sauna, and a hot tub too. One of my personal favorites is the Tropical Smoothie Bar, so you can always enjoy a fresh fruit smoothie after a workout. If we head west out of Student Center East, we'll arrive at the Lecture Center Plaza, more commonly known as the Quad. The Quad is surrounded by some of UIC's biggest classroom buildings and is the heart of East Campus. Here, you'll find students relaxing, catching up on homework, skateboarding, chalk drawing, rallying, you name it. The Quad is also most active during the annual Student Involvement Fair, where over 200 of UIC student organizations gather to provide food and great music and free goodies in hopes of recruiting new members. Now let's take a quick look at some of our classrooms, labs, and studios. From big lecture centers to small discussion and seminar rooms, you'll find lots of different classroom types supporting many different learning styles. Back at the Quad, we saw the original campus lecture halls, but our newest classrooms are located here at the Academic and Residential Complex, or the ARC. Completed in 2019, the ARC includes three large lecture halls featuring turn-to-team design elements and four smaller classrooms equipped with the latest technology to enhance team-based learning. Typical classes for these lecture halls include introductory or service courses. All new UIC buildings are designed to meet some of the highest environmental standards. The classroom side of the ARC has recycling stations that allow for future waste streams like composting. It even has a native plant rain garden that reduces storm water and attracts pollinators, helping both our net zero water and biodiverse campus go. The building's residential tower is also home to over 500 students. It includes a fitness center and its own student-managed Starbucks. Now, not all of your classes will be in lecture halls. Let's head over to some of UIC's smaller classroom buildings like Lincoln, Douglas, and Grant Halls. Douglas Hall is home to the College of Business and Administration and its career center. Grant Hall houses the university's writing center and language laboratories. Lincoln Hall has large campus oasis or informal learning space, but all three buildings support all kinds of classes from many different departments. This group of buildings is another example of how UIC takes sustainability seriously. Lincoln, Douglas, and Grant Hall were all renovated to meet LEED environmental standards. 
The temperature is regulated by geothermal wells that were dug 100 feet underground in the fields to the west and by a daylight shading management system where glazed windows detect the amount of sunlight and blinds automatically adjust. Recycled materials were used in construction and solar panels provide a percentage of the electricity for the cluster of buildings. Here we're at the architecture and design studios. As the name suggests, you'll find studio spaces here that support the architecture, industrial, and graphic design programs. Fun fact, a planned expansion of this building was never finished, so there are a few stairways that lead to nowhere. On the other side of campus, we have the science and engineering labs, which house laboratories for all fields of science, such as biology, chemistry, anatomy, and an electronic visualization lab an interdisciplinary and interactive research laboratory managed by the College of Engineering and the Architecture, Design, and the Arts that focuses on visualization and virtual reality. It's even where the blueprints for the original Death Star from the Star Wars movies were created. The UIC Theater is next on our tour. It is the black box theater seating up to 200 guests. The space is flexible and can support a variety of shows. The UIC Theater Department produces four shows a year, in addition to student-led projects. The theater community puts a lot of Chicago's local talent to use. Our students often have guest directors from nationally renowned and local theater companies like Stephanie Wolf and the Looking Glass Theater. Across from the theater is the UIC Music Department, which hosts vocal and instrumental ensembles that are open to majors and non-majors alike. Looking for a quiet place to study? Let's head over to the library. With over 3 million visitors last year, the Richard J. Daly Library serves both UIC students and the broader academic community. The library provides access to both physical and digital resources, housing rare books, printed materials, and the university archives, which specialize in the history of Chicago. The library is divided into different quiet zones that help match your study style. These zones include the collaborative for group work and quiet and silent zones for individual work. The first floor of the library features the Idea Commons, which is a large study space that includes computers available for student use, both Mac and PC, charging station tables, seminar rooms, which can be rented for up to two hours, and the whiteboard walls, which help students with group projects. There are countless other study spaces on and around campus, such as coffee shops and outdoor spaces. Whether you decide to live on campus or commute from home, UIC offers plenty of options to find community. Specifically for commuters, UIC has the Commuter Student Resource Center, located in SCE, where lockers, a refrigerator, and a lounge slash study area is available to all commuters. For those living on campus, living spaces range from traditional to apartment-style dorming in the residence halls, like Courtyard on East Campus to Thomas Beckham Hall on South Campus. UIC is one of the nation's most diverse campuses and is known for its commitment to social good through its research and community initiatives. For example, the Latino Cultural Center is one of seven centers for diversity and cultural understanding on campus. Others include the African American Cultural Center, the Disability Cultural Center, the Gender and Sexuality Center, and the very first Arab American Cultural Center on a college campus in the United States, just to name a few. Each of these centers offer numerous study spaces and tutoring opportunities. Also on UIC's campus is the Jane Addams Hall House in honor of Jane Addams. It was formerly a settlement home for poor immigrant women in the 19th and 20th century. Jane Addams, one of the founders, is considered the founder of social work. Thus, our College of Social Work is named after her and is also rumored that the house is haunted. Your teachers are one of the best resources here at UIC. You'll find a lot of them at the University Hall, or UH, also known as the Beacon of UIC. At 28 stories tall, this iconic building dominates the campus landscape. One of its quirks is that it's wider at the top than at the base, a nod by the architect to the city of broad shoulders. You'll notice that the windows form an eye shape that represent the University of Illinois. University Hall provides office space for campus administration and faculty, so you'll probably head over here if you take advantage of office hours or academic advising.
UH also houses the Office of External Fellowships, where you can meet with the counselor to discuss scholarship opportunities, and the Office of Study Abroad, where you can get the chance to study anywhere on all seven continents. Another major building, if you're looking for help, is at the corner of Racine and Harrison, the Student Services Building, SSB. SSB is where you'll find most of your on-campus resources, such as the Student Employment Office, TRIO slash Upward Bound, Counseling Services, Financial Aid, and Admissions. The African American Academic Network, or AAAN, and the Latin American Recruitment Education Services, LARES, are also located in this building to provide tutoring, academic advising, and professional development. Fun fact. This building used to house a Jewel Osco, Burger King, and was formerly a mall. That concludes our virtual tour. There is so much more to UIC, like the fact that it's in the center of one of the largest and most culturally diverse cities in America, or the fact that UIC students get great opportunities due to our proximity to downtown Chicago. But I'll leave it up to you to find out as you discover yourself as a student here. If you want to learn more about UIC, make sure to click the link in the description box. Bye! So who's ready to go back to UIC and get another degree? <laughs> uh, we're grateful to our student uh, campus tour guide, which obviously was trying to also be a recruitment piece. Um, but I learned a couple new things. I didn't know that the whole house was considered to be haunted, so that was interesting. Uh, Wendy? Uh, yes, I thought that that was a great video. Um, I'm very, I feel very fortunate we were able to share that with you today. I uh, hope that you enjoyed that campus tour and just the, the peer from, from here to peer or peer from here uh, video that we had. We have one more short video for you. As I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we're very pleased to be able to share with you the UAC Downtown Voices. Uh, the Downtown Voices is a student led uh, co-ed acapella group at UIC. They were founded in 2014 and the Downtown Voices sing a variety of genres including pop, rock, theater, and more. Uh, they have competed in the International Championship of Collegiate Acapella and have performed at various events around campus in the Chicagoland area. They are really a wonderful student group and when we had talked to them about this a long time ago, they made the effort to say let's try and do something virtually. So they have a uh, one song performance for you. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and share screen and we'll go from there. There is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun.
hope you enjoyed that performance by the Downtown Voices. Uh, we're very proud of our students and how they're making adjustment during the pandemic. Now, speaking of students, I'm pleased that we're joined by two uh, members of our student university ambassadors. Uh, the University Ambassadors is a student organization comprised of students engaged, excuse me, engaged students who attend the university events not only to provide a student perspective, but to network with alumni and friends. Members are offered professional development resources, engagement and volunteer opportunities, and a sense of community. We're pleased to be joined by two of our University Ambassadors today, and this is the official student group of the Alumni Association. We have with us both Matthew and Rena, and I'm going to turn it over to them and let them go ahead and introduce themselves and tell you a little about what it's like to be a student at UIC right now. So Matthew, I think you're first. Matthew, can you unmute? Are you muted? Are you? Can you unmute yourself? No, okay, so we have to um, give us one second to give you to unmute you. Um, there we okay, go. I think I can okay. speak now. Welcome. All right, perfect. Yeah, thank you for having us today. Oh, I just want to say that Capella group is very talented. But yeah, uh, my name is Matthew Mendris, and I'm a freshman here at, uh, at UIC. I'm studying biological sciences and uh, I'm on the pre-med track because I aspire to become a physician. And uh, I'm from Chicago, but uh, I was born in Orlando. Hello, my name is Rena Pokerill and I am a freshman at UIC. I'm from Schaumburg, Illinois, which is in the suburbs of Chicago. I am studying psychology, but right now I'm kind of thinking about minoring in art next year as well. I don't know if I will do, but kind of thinking about it. And I'm planning to become a psychologist later in my career. So, um, you know, ever since I, uh, I moved to the city, I thought that um, there, there was no better place to live other than Chicago. And uh, that, that's one of the reasons why, why I chose to go to U UIC. But um, in addition to that, I chose UIC because it's, a, it's an awesome school for my major and career aspirations. And um, you know, UIC holds many opportunities for, uh, for their students. But um, you know, the downside to that is that I'm starting my freshman year during a pandemic, so I'm never on campus because my classes are, pure, are purely online. But uh, I, I've been making the best out of my situation. Um, I've joined a lot of organizations here at UIC to uh, stay involved, such as the University Ambassadors, which I'm here through to meet you all today. Um, but another or organization I'm in is uh, the undergraduate student government. And uh, we've been doing a lot of great work being advocates for the students. And uh, despite the current situation of taking classes at home, um, I love going to UIC. And um, even though I'm not going anywhere, uh, I'm, I'm grateful to have uh, very supportive uh, people around me here at UIC and um, the people I've met um, are uh, really helpful in uh, my success. Okay. Um, I chose to go to UIC because it's school closest to my home among other universities. UIC has a good psych program and it's more affordable than schools like, you know, Loyola and Northwestern because I don't want to like pay a lot to go to school. I appreciate that UIC has courses that will prepare me for my future field as I plan to be like, like I'm kind of thinking about being like a clinical psychologist. Life and studies are different this year due to COVID since all classes are remote instead of coming into class in person and being able to meet peers and my professors in person. The professors I, ha I have so far have kind of modified the workload due to COVID, understanding that online courses can be stressful. Also, I feel like that a lot of people I met here are really nice and that some of the people I knew in high school are here. So that makes me feel less alone. Like, it's just good to have people, you know, to be around here. It does feel too good to have, people, have some people I knew to be in the same school as me. The lectures would be recorded, which means I have to watch them on my own instead of having a set time for 
when I come and listen to the lecture, like, like this is just something you would do like before COVID. I do have some live sessions where I end up meeting either in Blackboard Collab and, or Zoom. So I am managing to do great in my classes. Like I try to set up times when I listen to certain lectures for each class and set up a time each day working on my lab packets and, and other assignments. While watching lecture videos, I've been taking notes a lot and that has been helpful for me to do well my exams. Cause like the exams are not open book and, and like everything is just in my notebook to look for the answers. Overall, I've been managing my time very well. At UIC, I hope to achieve my bachelor's in psychology graduating in the year 2024 and hope to be a like clinical psychologist. I'm sorry if I'm kind of repeating things, but yeah. I hope all my achievements at UIC will lead me into getting accepted into a really good graduate program, like maybe in getting into like Ivy Leagues or like getting into like some schools I dream to be in like UCLA or somewhere. Yeah, that's all I got. Yeah, so um, I hope that gives you, you know, a small sense of what it's like, um, what student life is like during this uh, challenging time. Uh, you know, I, I was here during the video as well, and it was new for me as well to see um, the cool buildings that um, I, I don't get to see, even though I'm a student right now. <laughs> but um, we're happy to answer any questions you may have um, for us as uh, online students. Can I start out with a question? Um, yes. and it's also unfair because I can unmute myself. Um, so we are going to give the people the ability to unmute, but if you want to chat a question too, I'm happy to, to read the question. Um, so Matthew and Rena, you have um, an incredible resource right now for you on the phone or on Zoom, I suppose I should say, where you have graduates from the class of 1970. Um, what is one thing you um, want them to know about UAC today that, that maybe people don't know or it's a little unknown? Oh. Well, um, you know, UIC has um, a lot of resources online as well. You know, I, I, the video talked a lot about the vid, um, resources in person, but um, there's just as many resources online. They've in integrated a lot of the like tutoring ser services to um, be online. So like everything's pretty much accessible um, on your computer. Are you any yeah, thought? I, I totally agree. And, and I wouldn't really be 100% sure for now if I were to answer this because it's because it's my first semester and I've never really been on campus and I really don't know much stuff so but yeah whatever Matthew said is true like so far everything has been online. Well it will be a unique time period that you go down the history books too right as far as <laughs> You haven't been on campus and you're in this this unique online learning situation which is not what I think you probably signed up for of course. Um, but someday we'll, we'll get back there and UAC is doing some great research as I'm sure we've all heard with the COVID vaccine. So hopefully this is not too much longer. Um, is there any questions for our building grads that you'd like to ask the students? Uh, either if you wanna chat them or if you just wanna raise your hand and we can unmute you and I can only see half the screen. So uh, I think they're gonna hold on with us for a little bit too. I have to tell you from an alumni program standpoint, it's weird from a staff member standpoint that we're talking so much and we would like to hear from all of you. <laughs> um, so that's actually going to lead into the next part of our, our programming. Um, and Matthew, I don't know if you are able to stay on or if you have studies or classes you need to go to, but we invite you to stay on and appreciate you coming now. Just to share a little bit about your experience because it is so uh, unique and, and let's just face it, it's, it's, it's an odd time. <laughs> so, so thank you. Yeah, definitely I can uh, stay on. Oh, great. Yeah, Great. I can also stay too. I'm actually finished. I'm actually done with this semester. Everything's finished for me. Wonderful. Oh, great. Because graduation is tomorrow. Time is a little bit irrelevant. <laughs> so that's <what's> wonderful. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, was there any questions before we go to the next part? Of oh, please. Uh, I have a question um, yes. for, for both of them. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned there's a big need for you both financially. Uh, were you able to take advantage of any scholarships that are offered? Uh, to help defray some of the costs of your um, endeavors? Yeah, so um, I, UAC added this uh, like portal where you can like find different scholarships. Uh, we call it like UAC SNAP. You know, you can find different scholarships on it. 
Um, I don't think there's any scholarships directly related for uh, COVID. Well, actually, um, yeah, there is. Um, like there, there's like a question asking about, about like how COVID has affected you. Um, but like there's nothing really like UIC does. Um, they don't give students like each student like a scholarship. You have to kind of like find it yourself. You have to find it. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah, true. And I also like, I think I also signed up to like some email subscription to like scholarships and, and I feel like I get the emails every month, like giving me like all kinds of scholarship opportunities. Okay. And I feel like I haven't really found ones like related to like, to whatever I need. Cause like it would ask like, you know, scholarships for like those who want to be like in the business field or pre-med right. and stuff. Okay. Yes. At all. May I reflect a reflection back, um, a question back? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so, um, so you know, we have, um, we can find scholarships like online, but um, how, how would you guys uh, were able to uh, find scholarships while you guys were students? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Um, <laughs> I was given a small scholarship uh, from Kiwanis, and that was many, many years ago. But I, I, it, it was enough with $89 a quarter or $90 a quarter. Yeah, 89 80. That was incredible for the wow. situation at that time. So uh, um, I, I, I was fortunate, but uh, again, the need is there. I, I think there's a portal that both of you can go to for scholarships as well. Uh, familiar with the program a little bit that you, you were able to identify some scholarships, I think, right. at the beginning of the year. Again, I don't know all the qualifications, but it is something for you to take a look at anyway. I would say, I, I mean, I know when I enrolled, so it would have been 66, um, um, I, I was pretty totally clueless. Um, yeah, I know there was something called an Illinois State Scholarship in my first adult learning was that I neglected to sign the application. So I was denied. Um, I think I would have been eligible for a little bit of money or something, but it was one of those learning moments. Uh, but pretty much everybody, we all lived at home and everybody worked. Right. So every, I worked at the Jewel. Um, everybody worked, everybody yeah. had a job. And that's, that's what we, pretty much everybody I knew um, had a job and that's what we did is we right. just worked and went to school and I don't know. It was it was pretty basic, if you will. Yeah, yeah. but a good education. Outside of campus life, everybody couldn't afford to go anywhere else. No work, and uh, there was no picking colleges. You, you just went. Really, that's the one you could afford. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in, those days, in those days, the post office gave out scholarships if your parents worked at the post office. So oh, that's how I got a scholarship. It it didn't amount to much money, but that was what paid my way through. Right. But the affordability of UIC was amazing. My tuition was $98 a quarter. I had a partial scholarship, so I paid $35 a quarter. So three times a year, I paid $35 and got through the university at $35 a quarter. So, well, and you know, I know you saw Wendy's uh, slide where she put up tuition that's fifteen thousand dollars a year. Just if you're not familiar, if we were to compare ourselves, just in the category of Chicago to like a Northwestern, they're running like sixty-six thousand dollars a year. So right. we are still very affordable in the realm of higher education, while it's still extremely expensive. Um, we have one question that came in through chat. If I could ask both of you, which was, how are you handling peer interaction since the study is all online? So how are you meeting? other UIC students, and I know you're talking about student government and the ambassadors, but other ways to try and um, make connections in this interesting world. Yeah, so um, peer interaction is uh, it's very rare now, but um, yeah, um, I've connected with a lot of students, um, other students through Facebook. Um, there's like this Facebook group I joined for uh, the class of 2024, but um, mostly um, the people I've met is through organizations like university ambassadors and student government. Um, that's how I really got to um, know people. But other than that, um, like like most classes are um, are not live. So like you have to watch a video. So like just really um, interaction is uh, very limited, sadly. 
Oh, yeah. And even though, like, like interactions with your, like, other people, like, in class could be rare, um, actually, like, in my anthropology class, which is all lab class, um, I remember, like, we had to work on a museum project, and then, like, I did end up get, I did get to work with the group, so, like, we just had to, like, exchange, like, Snapchat users, and then, like, communicate through there, and also, and we would also get to meet for, like, lab, and also the other project I did for my other class was, like, for my LAS 110, like, some, some seminar class I did, and then, like, I kind of did the same thing, like, you know, exchange snaps with the, with the group I'm supposed to work with, and then, like, and then, like, we would, like, kind of communicate, like, who does which part, like, when working on a project. So that's pretty much the interactions I've had. But I will say it's hard to make friends online. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, at first, like, I remember, like, before, like, way before school started, people would just, like, like, you know, make group chats, like, with those with the same major as you or same interests or, like, like, for example, if people are interested in, like, rushing in the fall, they would also make a group chat for that. And then it's, like, later on, people just have their own group of friends or, and it's, like, um, you kind of drip from everyone. That's what I, that's what it kind of is like. Well, it's, um, you're both very smart, of course, because you joined the University Ambassadors <laughs> and you're engaging in student organizations, which is really, I think, particularly important in this current environment, but also for long-term success. Um, and it's interesting because we do have so much technology, but that also makes it harder because it's not that same personal connection. So um, thank you both again for being here. And please, uh, if you can continue to participate in the conversation, but I do hope that you were able to share some memories and, and whether that's, you know, <laughs> commuting to campus and what that was like. And we always hear about the peer room and how fun, there's some fond memories in the peer room. I did share, um, with our group, two things that if you're not aware of, uh, one, all of the yearbooks are online. The University Archivist has done a wonderful job. So if you haven't seen the yearbook and you want to actually just go through the pages um, or see any UIC history, I highly recommend looking and we can send out that link. Wendy, can we send out the link to the yearbook? <laughs> after? Yeah. Um, oh, good. There's Catherine and, and, and her group. Um, so I was just mentioning that I hope that everybody had a great conversation and that the yearbooks are online. So if you want to see that, we'll also send out the links so you can look through your yearbook or any yearbook that we have um, available. Um, and then we really do hope that you come back when we have the celebration. Oh, there's a yearbook. Oh, thank you, Mr. Jones. I see that. Oh, no, wait, we've got a couple of them. It's still upside down. Wow, wow. The class of 1970s yearbook. I love it. Oh. I've got mine There's too. A few, yeah. I still have mine too. I know oh, you. Yeah, I still have mine, boys. Oh yeah. yeah. The styles and the, the hairstyles and the clothes <laughs> are so funny. Oh. Yeah. Well, I love that you both had that. You pulled that up. If you don't have it, again, you can see it online, but that's fantastic. Um, it's, it's just really wonderful. Um, so I want to uh, just thank a few people for their help because we did uh, have a couple of your classmates that were really helpful to us. Um, I know I, I'm not sure if everybody's on the phone, so I'm just going to say all the names. Um, Jim Berry, Fran Eichhorst, who for sure I saw because she was in my group, uh, Cam Nowak, uh, Jim and Barbara Reese, David Scora, and Carol Wise, thank you so much for helping us plan what I'm going to call is part A, because we would like you to come back for part B. Um, and so really, as we conclude the program today, I want to say save the date, but I don't know what date I'm telling you to save for yet. Uh, and so we will continue as things develop. Obviously want to have you back on campus when it's safe. Um, you saw at the beginning of the program, but really what happens for the golden graduate ceremony is we will give you golden caps and golden gowns. Um, you will have lunch with the platform party, which is our chancellor which I don't even think we mentioned him today, but he has been phenomenal for UIC and has really put us on an incredible path forward. Um, and has incredible accomplishments under his belt and his leadership for the past five years. Um, so you would hear from him and then everybody else that is in our senior leadership. And then you would actually process into commencement with our undergraduate students that would be graduating. Uh, so we will, as soon as we know we can do it, we will send you save the dates. Hopefully it will be next December. Again, depending on how things go um, with all of the 
uh, with, yeah, with the pandemic and, and with getting us uh, vaccinated and, and all of that. So, um, but until then we do, um, I can share with you, we do have met, I think maybe Wendy mentioned this in the beginning. Give me one second, I'll share a screen, maybe. Um, we do have some upcoming programming if you want to engage with us virtually until then. We run once a month, a pro, well, excuse me, once a month, once a week, a program called UAC Alumni Exchange, which is literally mm -hmm. programming that is meant to um, provide entertainment and education and, and distract you from the everyday, if you will, um, with UAC faculty, staff, and alumni experts. So this is our lineup coming in January. Um, of course, we have something on fasting because it's a new year and, and people like to be healthy in the new year. Um, we also have two college of education programs we're doing, one about supporting children and families during these challenging times. And then um, uh, two of our expert faculty will talk about what does defunding the police mean. Uh, but we do these about every week. And so the, the programming is a huge wide variety. You can see them all online. We'll also send a link to that. Uh, they are all free. They're all over the central um, central time lunch hour. So we welcome you to join in for any of those conversations um, as we continue to, to plan. Um, but otherwise, we just want to thank you for your time today, for participating and, and letting us have this unique programming in this unique year. Um, we really do want to stay in touch and hope that you are able to come back again in the future. And as soon as we know, trust me, you will get all kinds of emails and invitations from us to invite you back to campus. I'm going to stop share so I can see all of you again. Um, but that really concludes our program today. Uh, you're welcome to stay and chat if you'd like to chat over Zoom. But um, we're, we're so grateful to all of you for joining. And, and thank you again to Wendy for pulling everything together and all the then and now. And if you want to challenge Wendy on anything she said that you don't agree with, go ahead and do that. That will be fun. <laughs> uh, so, but thank you all for being here and, and, um, and for having the day with us. And congratulations on your 50 years since graduation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank, you. So much. Thank you. It's been an honor. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you. I gotta go. I have students yeah. waiting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.